So after five years of locking down their best models, OpenAI did something that not many people saw coming. They went totally open source on their latest model. Sam Altman literally admitted that they were, quote, on the wrong side of history, and he just dropped two massive models that you can run locally. But here's the twist. Early testers are saying these models might, well, let's see. Chinese AI labs have been eating OpenAI's lunch with models like GLM 4.5 and Kimi K2, and now we're seeing why OpenAI suddenly is changing their tune. So is this a strategic masterstroke or a desperate attempt to stay relevant and stay alive? Today, I'm going to break down some of the reasons why OpenAI's open source pivot could change some things and why the reception has been kind of interesting. So let's dive in and take a look today. Welcome to Startup Pack, I'm Spencer, and here at Startup Pack, we love to train software developers and build custom software solutions for companies. With a decade of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years in software development, I've mastered transforming tech teams and products. So OpenAI just took uh, uh, shook up the entire AI landscape by releasing their first open source model since GPT-2. So the community response has, tells a fascinating story about where AI is really headed, heading. So Sam Altman publicly stated OpenAI has been, has been, quote, on the wrong side of history when it comes to open source their technology. This represents a complete 180 degree turn from their closed door API only approach in the over the past five years. So the timing isn't coincidental. Chinese labs, DeepSeek, GLM, and Quen have been dominating the open source space. And OpenAI realized that they were losing developer mindshare to models people could actually run and modify locally. Now, the Trump administration has also been pushing the US AI companies to open source more technology to compete globally. So this admission basically validates every criticism about OpenAI abandoning their original mission. Now, let's kind of dive in and take a look at some of these models and look at their release here. So we can see here, I'm going to move my uh, my head here to the other side of this here. So we can see that introduce, uh, you know, this is OpenAI's announcement. We're introducing GPT OS. So there, it's 120 billion and a 20 billion parameter model, right? So just read you here this opening part. We're releasing GPT o OSS 120 and 20 billion two state-of-the-art open-weight la uh, language models that deliver strong real-world performance at low cost. Available under the flexible Apache 2 license, these models outperform similarly sized open models on reasoning tasks, demonstrating strong tool use capabilities, and are optimized for efficient deployment on consumer hardware. So this is an emphasis on consumer hardware, and I'm gonna talk about that statement here in a second. They're trained using a mixed reinforcement learning and techniques informed by OpenAI's most advanced internal models, including O3, and other frontier models. Now it goes on to say that you can run this on edge devices with just 16 gigs of uh, 16 gigabytes of memory. Now that's kind of a little bit of a stretch because uh, you know 16 gigabytes, maybe 16 gigabytes of GPU memory, but not just 16 gigabytes of RAM, right? So that can be definitely misconstrued. But these models are compatible with our response API and are designed to be used with agentic workflows, the exceptional instructions, uh, instruction following tools like web search, Python, code execution, and reasoning. So they're talking about safety is foundational to our approach, and so they're starting to open source things. They're also talking about their partners that they're working with and how they pre-trained it. And then these are their two billion models, right, with how they're breaking this down, right? So there's the 120 billion models, which have 36 layers and 117 billion total parameters. And then their 20 billion, which is 24 layers and 21 billion of total parameters and the different uh, token size, um, and so they're talking about how these train these. And so this is their Hugging Faces uh, platform here where they're working or where they have open sourced this, right? And so a lot of this, you know, re repeat here, right? This highly anticipated open weight release by OpenAI. So, you know, that's a big release here to make it even better and more impactful the community. The models are licensed under Apache 2, which basically means free by free. It means if you're gonna use this, you just have to release the your source code along with it. Now, this is the Olama model where you can then take this and use it um, to use reasoning, angetic model, and versatile developer use cases, right? So if you're going to modify this, then you just have to release it. That's part of you know what Apache 2 model is, right? 
So they go through a lot of the different uh, highlights, right? Agenic capabilities, full chain of thought, configurable reasoning, um, effort, fine tunable, and permissive Apache 2 Lightened, built freely without copy left restrictions or patent risk, ideal for experimental customization and commercial deployment, right? And it goes through and breaks down uh, how these rank up. Now, in their card here then, they release, and this is their official card release, they say that this is ranking up there, right up there with, uh, you know, above O3 Mini, uh, right in the range of 04 mini um, and so right in that range so definitely clearly you know somewhat uh, neutered from 04 right because they're showing that it's even showing less but still a pretty impressive model by their standards so this is an interesting release and an interesting move by uh, by OpenAI, right? Um, so the 120 billion model, so to kind of put this into perspective, the 120 billion model needs an H100 GPU with 80 gigs of memory. So I'm not totally sure I would call this consumer grade. I don't know a lot of people with $30,000 worth of hardware just kind of laying around. So it's an interesting statement for them to say that it's consumer grade when, and, and maybe consumer grade means more than, you know, one H100 is what they consider not consumer grade. I don't know a ton of people buying H100 hundreds um the 20 billion model says it can run with just 16 gigs so this is something that you could run more reasonably right you could get a 3090 uh 4090 uh maybe even like get i know what we're starting to build out a lot of right now is multiple 3090s and if you get two 3090s you could comfortably run this right so the 120 billion model activates a five 0.1 billion parameters per token thanks to its mixture of expert architecture right now i know i was reading online where some people with like 124 gigs of ram on their machines were saying they were getting around 10 uh 10 tokens per second i don't have a machine laying around with 128 gigs of ram maybe it's time to get one there put that in my list but we really do like to build out our own diy servers so i've actually made a lot of different playlists here on the channel about how to build out our diy servers so you can check out our playlist here so with a pretty standard diy server you can run the 20 billion model pretty comfortably i've just started to get this uh, down this is brand new so like i haven't had to spend a lot of time getting it tested but some of the early benchmarks show that the 120 supposedly matches some of the 04 mini performance but real world testing is kind of still into some different stories. Community feedback suggests that these models feel a little nerf compared to the OpenAI's internal benchmarks. Chinese models like GLM 4.5 and Kimi K2 are outperforming the new OpenAI models already. So already they're kind of behind the game in some of these open source models by what most of the community is reporting. Again, I haven't gotten to do a lot of testing with this myself, but that's just some of the early reports that I'm reading. So the performance gap between why it kind of explains why OpenAI waited so long to release this and how it kind of came without a small amount of fair like without a lot of fanfare, right? Because GLM 4.5 achieves 90% tool use success rate, higher than Claude 4 Sonnet, uh, and definitely this OpenAI model. So Kimi K2 is completing twice as many coding tasks as comparable models at one third the cost. So some of these open Chinese open source models are already ahead of this, which is why I don't think we heard this totally shouted from the rooftops yet. Now, I mean, they're definitely in a press release, right? But if your system, if your company has systems that aren't connected, make sure you reach out to us because here at Startup Pack, our specialty is connecting systems so your company can work to maximum efficiency. Check out startuppack.com slash Spencer. So instead of making a huge GPT-5 bigger and more expensive, OpenAI is trying a completely different approach here. Now, they might still be releasing the GPT-5, but is this the big release that they've been talking about for a long time? These mixture of expert models use similar, smaller uh, smart parameters and use these activations rather than using a brute force scaling. So 120 billion parameter model only activates 5.1 billion parameters per token and that's efficiency over raw size so they're betting on specialized efficient models over huge monolithic giants and i actually support this i think this is the right uh the right take right but this shift could signal that we're reaching the limits of scale-based improvements in AI. And this is what I've been talking about for a long time. Now, Apache 2.0 license means developers can actually build businesses on these models without having to pay licensing fees. So Olama, Hugging Faces, VLLM, and LM Studios have already native support ready to go for this. OpenAI partnered with deployment platforms before they launch, uh, and they're serious about this adoption, right? The models uh, come with PyTorch, Metal, and even Rust implementation. So this is OpenAI's attempt to build 
to rebuild developer relationships that they've lost uh, with their API first strategy. So OpenAI spent months running additional safety tests that delayed the release from June to August. The models went through their preparedness framework with adversarial fine-tuned testing. So despite all the safety work, early users report that the model feels overly restricted and kind of nerfed. Now, there's a $500,000 red team challenge to find safety issues, and this is essentially crowdsourcing their testing. OpenAI is still uh, trying to prioritize perception over actual utility, which explains why this has a lukewarm reception. Now, running this locally could cost basically nothing after you build your own server. And again, if you need help building your own server, I've got lots of tutorials. I have a whole uh, channel uh, playlist here on, um, not channel, but whole playlist on different, uh, how to build out these open source models. Now, the cloud API costs or for similar costs would be thousands of dollars per month. And so this is a great move by OpenAI and I really like to see them do this. So I like to give uh, you know, creds where creds are due. And in this case, I love to see them open sourcing this. So both models use, alter uh, use alternating dense and sparse attention patterns, which is similar to GPT-3. Now, the 120 billion model has 117 billion total parameters, but only activates 5.1 billion per, per, uh, per token through expert routing, right? And so this makes it really efficient. Now, Chinese models like GLM 4.5 are using MOE approach with better real-world results. So it's interesting to see why OpenAI took this, right? The expert routing mechanism remains proprietary. OpenAI isn't sharing their secret sauce and how they're doing this yet. So healthcare, finance, and government can use OpenAI class models without having to leave their premises. This is a big move because this allows you to then download this model and be able to host it onto your own server. So if you're running a system that needs GDPR or HIPAA or other regulatory requirements, you can download this and run it onto your own systems. And here at Startup Pack, our specialty is helping people build out systems so that they can keep those proprietary uh, systems uh, and, and algorithms built in their set themselves as well as also to be able to keep that customer data private. So OpenAI's open source pivot legitimizes the entire local AI movement that we've been building. And I think this is part of what we're seeing as we see the bubble burst. We're seeing that they couldn't beat with just total brute size, right? So they're going to have to shift to some of these different models. And this could trigger other major labels to release competitive open models to stay relevant. So the race is shifting away from who has the biggest model to who can democratize AI access most effectively. Now, developers now have real alternatives to expensive APIs for building AI-powered applications. This also gives us more alternatives to some Chinese open source dominance uh, who's been dominating in this space for a little while here. So it's interesting to see a start to democratize AI. And I say start because not all of this and how they built uh, every part of this is totally open source, but they're at least giving us the model to be able to use in an open source way. Now, what do you guys think? I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Do you agree with my with my take? Do you disagree? What do you think about OpenAI open sourcing this? What are your thoughts? Here at Startup Hack, we love to train software developers as well as to build custom software solutions for companies. So reach out because we'd love to help. And here's some great information about some of our services. Hi, I'm Spencer, a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and 25 years in software development, I've transformed technology teams and products for businesses just like yours. As you are fractional CTO, you get the strategic guidance of a a seasoned technology executive without the full-time commitment. Perfect for companies ready to leverage cutting edge technology without expanding headcount. My team at Startup Hack has already built advanced AI agents for small and medium businesses, automating complex workflows and delivering advanced ROI to human workflows. We specialize in creating custom software that connects your systems into a single coherent technology ecosystem. Our development approach focuses on tangible business outcomes. For one client, we developed AI powered workflows that cut days off of human processes. For another company, by connecting multiple systems, we reduce processing time to increase their ROI by over 75%. We don't don't just write code, we architect solutions that scale. Whether you need cloud system architecture, data integration between legacy systems, or custom AI agents that automate your unique business processes, my team delivers results that exceed your expectations. Having led technology for a lot of companies and launched seven successful brands of my own, I bring battle-tested expertise to your business challenges. Our specialty is turning technological complexity into business advantage. So if you're ready to harness the power of AI and custom software to drive your business forward, let's connect 
connect. Together, we'll build technology that doesn't just solve today's problems, it positions you for tomorrow's opportunities. Technology, leadership, decades of experience, AI powered. Reach out today and we can help you. Check out startuppack.com Spencer.